This should be a drinking game. Every time I say affordable luxury in this video, we have to drink. Hey guys, Ben here. As advertising gets more and more advanced, it's likely that you're gonna be tempted by more treats. If you're in the market for a wristwatch, I bet there are a number of brands following you around the internet right now. I've noticed that loads of these adverts use the same buzzwords to try and pot you with your hard-earned cash. A variety of stupid sales slogans that essentially mean diddly squat. In an attempt to cut through some of the BS, I thought today we'd go through some of such slogans so that you can look right through them and actually choose the watch that's best for you. I've fallen victim to such marketing practices in the past, so I'm hoping that this video will prove useful. Let's start with the big hitters and then move on to some that are more obscure. Affordable luxury. This one simply has to come first. I see this phrase plastered over a load of brands on Instagram and it's just laughable. This saying is self-contradictory, a bit like gamble responsibly. The whole idea of a luxury product is that it's inherently not affordable for most people. I kind of get where they're coming from with this. I guess what they may be trying to say is that they're trying to offer comparable build quality for a lower price than what is typically considered luxury. However, in practice, I'm yet to ever see this fully materialize. The vast majority of brands using this term are offering products that, in my opinion, are nowhere near their luxury counterparts and just use the term affordable luxury as a placebo to convince people that these are luxury, despite the product's multiple deficiencies. In reality, loads of these brands are just mid-market brands trying to convince you otherwise. As with the rest of the things on this list, there might be the incredibly odd outlier, but in reality, this is almost all what I see. Cutting out the middleman. Hand in hand with affordable luxury, cutting out the middleman is a go-to choice for fashion watch brands. The premise here is that certain brands claim they can cut costs and lower prices by selling directly to the consumer online and avoiding markups from retail stores and advertising. Therefore, you can get a better watch for less money than with traditional watch brands. This one sounds really good on paper and it even makes logical sense. So what's there to be scared of? Once more, it's the implementation of this concept. Unfortunately, it seems that customers rarely ever see the promised benefits of this cost-cutting process, with the companies just using those cost-cutting methods as a way of creating even larger profit margins for themselves, and still selling their products at even more extortionate markups. My favorite brand, uh, Movement, perfectly showcased this a while back when they began selling their wristwatches in retail stores for the same price as their online store despite asserting for years that they were selling directly to you online to save you money. Most of the watch brands using this term aren't out to save you any money at all, and they're just trying to disguise their true intentions. There are certain brands out there, the occasional one, that might be trying to do things differently, but when you see this phrase, take it with a pinch of salt. The best way to cut out the middleman yourself is to research and purchase your own watches directly from Chinese wholesalers, but that's a video for another day. Shaking up the watch industry. Because of their revolutionary distribution system, lots of brands claim that they are shaking up or disrupting the watch industry, as if they were taking on the evil forces of the traditional watch brands. <laughs> For the most part, what are these brands actually doing that's revolutionary? Nothing. Wow, they're selling cheap watches online, so what? Why did they even say this sort of thing in the first place? Well, I think it's an attempt to try and get you to side with them almost to psychologically join them on this amazing mission? Almost like a call to action. I find it interesting how this works, but also amusing. The only thing to do with watches in any way that I think they might be disrupting is the marketing because some of these traditional watch brands are still very much stuck in the 20th century. It's like a few of them have only just discovered the internet. Despite the fact that they've got far better products, these other brands are still eating their lunch. Our story. Watch brands seem to include these as whole sections on their website, despite the brand having little to no heritage at all. I think they do this in an effort to make buyers feel like they're really buying into something substantial and meaningful, more than just a watch. Let's be real here. It takes a decent chunk of time to develop any sort of history or heritage. It takes decades, really. Any young brand trying to spout some sort of story is really skirting around the elephant in the room. Brands are founded to make money. They don't like to tell you that, but that's the truth. And that's completely fine, it's totally normal, but there's no reason you should fall for made up fairy tales and let brands use them as leverage. New brands have to start somewhere and that's cool. 
but in such circumstances, it's worth judging the watch for what it is. It's a watch. Also, make sure that you're aware of how these web pages actually match up to the region of manufacture. Lots of these brands are based in Europe and have all these beautiful winding landscape photographs, almost suggesting that that's where these watches come from. When in fact, loads of brands, especially fashion watch brands who are using these tactics, are generally shipping the watches from China, which isn't inherently bad, but you just need to be aware that they use these tactics. Handcrafted. What's better than a watch? Handcrafted one. These days, it's gotten to the stage where the word handcrafted is being used as a premium synonym for the word made. Let's be real here, some of the very cheapest and worst watches made in terrible Chinese sweatshops are essentially made by hand. People physically putting certain parts of the watches together. As long as there is one person somewhere along the design or production chain, brands will try and utilize the word handcrafted somewhere. In an attempt to try and convince you that these watches have been painstakingly created, as if it were a luxury watch worth thousands. As with the rest of the points in this video, it pays to do your research. I've generally found that watch brands who actually have good craftsmanship aren't afraid to showcase where and how their watches are made. Whereas those who abuse this jargon only ever talk about it, they never show you. These days there's also another assumption that I tend to make and that's if on the website they don't tell you where the watches are made, it's normally made in China. If you're only paying £100 for a watch, it may be worth ignoring this word altogether because realistically for that sort of price, are these going to be painstakingly manufactured? No. Premium quality. When someone tells you something is high quality, that's their opinion. I think it's fine when an independent third party gives their viewpoint on this, provided that they're nothing to do with the brand. However, in any industry, it pays to be skeptical when the brand themselves are trying to ram it down your throat how high quality their products are. Let's be real here. What are they going to do? Tell you that their products are bad quality? Of course, pretty much every brand is going to tout that their products are the best and that they're super high quality even if the product's rubbish and they know it. Their opinion is 100% biased. I've ordered watches that have been advertised as high quality before, they've arrived and they were terrible. I've purchased premium straps before which have arrived and been disastrous. Is this buzzword as bad or annoying as affordable luxury? Not quite, but I still think it's something worth ignoring, at least when it's the brand themselves that are telling you this. I think your best bet is to look at a variety of unpaid reviews and try and make a judgment for yourself on whether their claims are actually stacking up or not. I generally find quality watches don't need to loudly advertise their high quality nature. They tend to attract consumers who recognize the quality themselves. Fair prices. To go along with the latter, this is another one that I've seen creeping up in popularity recently. More brands are using this as a softer alternative to affordable luxury, which has gained a bit of ridicule over the years. The same premise really applies with this one. When a brand tells you their watches are fair prices, don't listen. It's not up to the company to judge whether the price is fair for you. It's up to you. They'd be telling you they were fair prices even if the markups were a million percent. A fair price for you considers what you find important and what sort of budget you got to play with. In fact, if you're looking for the best advice on low-cost wristwatches, why not subscribe to the channel? If you love wristwatches, you'll love my videos. I've broken down another four popular wristwatch buzzwords that do my head in over on my blog, benswatchclub.com. You'll find a link to that article in the video description. Definitely go check it out. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.